Hi, my name's Stuart, and today we're going to talk about getting at Cloud Foundry user provided services from Node.js. Here is a Node.js project uh, using Pug and Less that I created using the Express Generator and just modified slightly for the purposes of our demo. So first thing on our agenda is to make a user provided service. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And to help us out, I've created two user provided service definitions in the form of a piece of JSON. And you can see it's just a straight set of name value pairs. And I have two user provided services with just some nonsense data in them for the purposes of demonstration. And I made a little command line that shows you the syntax for creating user provided services in Cloud Foundry. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. So right now, if I do a CF services in my Cloud Foundry instance, I don't have any. So let's go ahead and CD into the UPS directory and I'll run my command line and we'll make our two Cloud Foundry instances. And now if we go CF services, you can see that I have two Cloud Foundry user provided service instances. And if I say CF service and I supply the service name, you can see that it will show me some metadata about them, including if there are any apps bound. And of course, right now there aren't any apps bound. So let's go ahead and deploy this app. We've got a very simple manifest, which I will push. And that manifest will create our app. Okay, we've deployed our Cloud Foundry app and we're going to show you what it looks like. But first of all, let's just do a CF app on our Cloud Foundry app name. And you can see that it spits out some useful information about our app. So let's go ahead and browse to it and we'll crack open our browser. By the way, this is the site where all the source code can be found. Real simple single page demo. And you can see, however, that we've successfully parsed and enumerated VCAP application and VCAP services. And we've enumerated through our user provided services. And we have dumped out for each service the name value pairs just by way of demonstration. Now, this works great when your app is running in Cloud Foundry. And we'll show you the code in a minute. But the problem that I wondered about was, how could I facilitate doing the same thing on my development box? So when I'm working in Visual Studio Code. And let's show you how we did that. Oh, and of course, we should mention that if we repeat our service command again, it now shows that our app is in fact bound to that service. And if we did the same thing for the other service, you'd see that it too is bound to the app. Here is the source code for the router that serves up the route of the home page. This is all generated code, except that we added one line called that gets our module, the CF ENV helper module, which we're going to go through. And then we make sure that the pug rendering engine can get to it because we're going to call render, which is going to invoke the pug view engine, and we're going to pass it the some variables. So we have a variable called title and a variable called info that are going to become part of the payload that goes to pug and the pug renderer is going to use the syntax and semantics for pug and render our variables. Let's just show you what that looks like really quick because it's pretty interesting. If you haven't used pug before, uh, pug actually comes out of a render framework called Jade and for a variety of reasons it got renamed. And so if we go to the views folder 
and pull up the index, you can see the beautiful simplicity that is pug. And that is that the info object that we passed in is getting uh, parsed. And inside of it, you can see that we are pulling back various app properties, in this case, name and version. And then in the user provided section, we're doing an enumeration through the user provided services. And for each, we are invoking something called list props, which returns the properties of the user provided service as an array of objects with a name and a value. And there really wasn't a nice way of doing this in the native library. And then just for fun, if you've ever wondered uh, how to render to the console um, an object, that's great. So let's go look at CF ENV helper. Fundamentally, we're going to use the CF ENV library, which is a helper library that's in NPM and available. We're also going to use the file system and path library. And we're going to start by just doing the basic thing of calling and getting the app environment variable. And this is a this call yields a rollup of both VCAP application and VCAP services, and then exposes a bunch of property. So now we have to deal with the fact that there's no service binding and those environment variables don't really exist in my shell. Now, I could have solved that by writing some sort of ornate gizmo that creates the environment variables in my shell, but I actually opted to do it a little easier. So I go get VCAP services, and if it's empty, I actually go to the same UPS folder that's got the JSON in it that was used to create our services in the first place, and I parse it by, by calling a little helper called make service, and then I add it to the services collection, and then I set, create an object, that holds the user provided services and I inject that into the CF services property that was already there, basically overriding the, the empty list of services with the list of services that I parsed off the disk and same sort of technique for getting the application. In this case, when I'm running locally, I just hard code some values. And then I really wanted to be able to have a set of name value pairs with strong properties so it was easier to bind and pug. And so to the object that is returned by the CFENV library, I added a new function. One of the great things about JavaScript is it's prototypical. And so I was able to add this new function called list props that converts the name value pairs that are anonymous types in the user provided services section into, into an array, which is easy to enumerate, of strong types. Again, name and value being our strong type. And you can take a look at this code. I'm sure there's a way more elegant way to do this all in one line in JavaScript. There always is. But this is my stepwise, easy to debug methodology. And so this function returns that list of properties. And if we go back to index pub, you can see that we just execute that and then we end up with an array and we can print out the value. So this is our way of extending the, uh, the library. So now that we've handled our name value pairs, we should be able to just run this thing locally. And in fact, if we go back to our browser window, we go to our local host on port 3000, uh, you can see our hard-coded app values and you can see that we've successfully parsed the UPS files and now my express pug app running in on my desktop will have the same behavior as if I had bound the services. Now, Obviously, I can make the JSON files different for my development environment than I use to make the user provided services in Cloud Foundry. But this is a really handy dandy little technique to be able to debug locally and to have our configuration be file driven, which means we can check it into source control and use it.